Given a vector u and some other non-zero vector a, in many applications, it's useful to be able to write the vector u as a linear combination of a scalar multiple of a and some vector orthogonal to a. In this picture, we see the vector u, which is expressed as a sum of this scalar multiple of a, called w1, and this vector orthogonal to a, called w2. And since u is the diagonal of the parallelogram defined by those two vectors, u is the sum. We'll use this picture in 2D to figure out how these vectors w1 and w2 are actually constructed, and then we'll generalize it to Rn and do an example. This vector w1 is called an orthogonal projection of u onto the vector a and w2 is the vector component of u orthogonal to a. So let's go over how to find the length of this vector w1. This is like the shadow of u cast on the vector a, or you can think of it as the amount that u goes in the direction of a. It's the vector component of u along a. Now, once we figure out its length, we can just take the vector a and scale it down so that it has that length, and that would give us w1. And then, since w1 plus w2 equals our vector u, once we find w1, we can easily find w2 by just subtracting w1 from u. So that's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and find the length of w1, and then we'll be able to express this vector, and hence we'll be able to express w2 as well. This will just take a little bit of trigonometry. Let's say the angle between u and w1 is theta. Then how can we use this to find the length of w1? Well, cosine theta would necessarily be adjacent over hypotenuse, so we could write that. This is the magnitude of w1, divided by the magnitude of the vector u. So then the magnitude of w1 clearly is just cosine of theta multiplied by the magnitude of u. So we get that equation by multiplying both sides of this by the magnitude of u. So that's the magnitude of w1. And we can actually express this as a cross product. By definition, we know the cross product u dot a is cosine of theta Theta we took to be the angle between u and w1, but because w1 is a scalar multiple of a, theta is also the angle between u and a. So u dot a is cosine theta times the product of their magnitudes. Hence, cosine theta times the magnitude of u, which remember is the magnitude of w1, cosine theta times the magnitude of u is u dot a, divided by the magnitude of a. So just from u and a, we can figure out w1's magnitude. We can figure out the length of the vector component of u along a. We just have to dot u and a, and then divide by a's magnitude. So then how would we actually find the vector w1? Well, we know it needs to be this long, and we know that it should be in the direction of a. So all we would have to do is take the vector a, and normalize it, that is, give it a length of 1 by dividing it by its own magnitude, and then just scale it to the length we desire, so multiply it by this scalar. So that's how we would find w1, and then we could subtract it from u to get w2. You can see in this computation from w1, we would have a magnitude of a squared in the denominator if we multiplied it out. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at the generalization of this to Rn. So this theorem is going to tell us that the way we decompose a vector u into a scalar multiple of a and a vector orthogonal to a is unique, and it will give us some notation and tell us how these projections are found. So if u and a are vectors in Rn, and a is non-zero, then u can be expressed in exactly one way in the form u equals w1 plus w2, where w1 is a scalar multiple of a, and w2 is orthogonal to a. w1, the vector parallel to a, is called the orthogonal projection of u on a. Again, it's kind of like a shadow cast on a by u. We could also call it the vector component of u along a. It's denoted like this, the projection of the vector u on the vector a. 
and this is how you calculate it, which is exactly what we saw above, except with the denominator having just been written like this. A has to get divided by its own magnitude once, so that it's now a unit vector, and then everything else here is just to give W1 the correct length, as we saw up here. And again, remember, this is a scalar times the vector A, so it produces a vector in the direction of A. With that said, we also know how to calculate W2. W2 is called the vector component of U that is orthogonal to A, and it's found by taking U and subtracting the projection of U on A. So it's just U minus that expression. All right, that's a lot of words, a lot of notation. Let's do a quick example. Find the vector component of U along A and the vector component of u orthogonal to a. So we'll decompose u into a scalar multiple of a and some vector that is orthogonal to a. Here's the formula for the projection of u on a, in case you need it. And here are the vectors. This is u, it's a vector in r cubed, and here's a, another vector in r cubed. And note, this formula can be used for any space rn, so the dimension does not cause a serious problem. Let's get into it. First, we're going to need the dot product, u dot a. So multiply corresponding components together. 3 times 1 is 3. 1 times 0 is 0. Negative 7 times 5 is negative 35. And add those together. So the dot product is negative 32. Then we'll have to divide by the magnitude of a squared. The magnitude of a is just the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. So 1 squared plus 0 squared plus 5 squared, all in a square root. That is the square root of 26. When we plug this in, of course, it's going to get squared, and so the square root will go away. Perhaps you recall the magnitude of a vector squared is the same as dotting that vector with itself, if you prefer to calculate it that way. Anyhow, we have all the pieces now. The projection of u onto the vector a is a multiplied by this scalar, and now we know that u dot a, the numerator, is negative 32. The denominator, the magnitude of a squared, is 26. So this gets multiplied by a, replacing a with what it equals in component form, 1, 0, 5. We then just have to distribute this scalar, which produces this vector, negative 16 thirteenths, 0, and negative 80 over 13. So this is the orthogonal projection of the vector u on the vector a. It's the amount of u going in the direction of a. But of course, u is not parallel to a, so we can't just write it as a scalar multiple of a, but we can write it as a linear combination of a scalar multiple of a and a vector orthogonal to a. So now let's write the vector component of u that is orthogonal to a. To find that, we just take u and subtract the vector we just found. Subtract the projection of u on a from u, and that will give us whatever's left, which will be orthogonal to a. The first component of u is 3, so the first component of this difference is 39 over 13 minus negative 16 over 13. So 39 over 13 plus 16 over 13. The second component of u is 1, so the second component of this difference will be 1 minus 0, which is just 1. The third component of u is negative 7. We're putting that in terms of thirteenths, so that's going to be negative 91 over 13. But we're subtracting the third component of the projection, so we actually end up adding 80 over 13. Doing a little bit of simplification, this turns out to be 55 over 13, 1, negative 11 over 13. This is the vector component of u orthogonal to a. If we add this and this, we will get u. 55 over 13 plus negative 16 over 13, for example, is 39 over 13, which is correct. That's 3, the first component of u. We've decomposed u into a vector parallel to a and a vector orthogonal to a. So that's what the orthogonal projection of a vector is, and that's how to find it and where that calculation comes from, at least in the two-dimensional case. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my linear algebra course and linear algebra exercises playlists in the description for more. If you enjoy my linear algebra content, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to select videos, as well as access to my lecture notes at the premium tier or above. Thanks for watching. Oh.
uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind, two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count and calculus, I'm the V to the T, my parameter, the rapidest, happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent, dominant, call me the Morgan, I get the compliments, the union in together like any time that we intersect, cause my opponents know they need